Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the 1929 Ford Model A Roadster. Um, last video where I left it, the body was not on it. Um, interior was not installed, so I've got that done. Um, it looks good. I really, I really like the colors of the interior with the uh, with the color of the body. Um, it, this kit goes together really, really well. Um, you won't have any trouble with it, except, and this isn't anything wrong with it, it's just very difficult, it's the radiator hoses. Whoa. I had a time getting those things on there because the way you have to mount the radiator, um, anyway, you'll see if you build it. And some of you guys may be like, that wasn't any trouble at all, but I had, I had quite a bit of trouble out of the, uh, radiator hoses. And again, not any, not any problems with the kit, just kind of, just a little tight way that they have to to be installed but hey just really quick if you haven't already subscribe to my channel I'd appreciate it if you do that also at the end of this video um, I'll have a slideshow this will be the completion video of this kit there's not a lot to do to it still just some minor details and the chrome and uh, door handles and light headlights and the grill which I had someone ask me um, on the last video, what did you black out the grill with? And I just used, I just used this um, acrylic black paint. This stuff works really, really good for like flat um, blower belt, the radiator hoses. Um, you have to be careful it doesn't stick that well to the plastic. So you're, you're it's easily chipped or the paint easily comes off, but um, it makes a really good flat not shiny at all finish and it's easy to you just put a little on a piece of paper here that's what just what i do dry i just i have a piece of paper and i just use it up um but it's quick it's easy you can wash the brush out in water um i don't i don't think you can get any like gloss colors or anything with it so i just use it for for the flat white like flat white flat black uh if i dry brush i'll use a mixture of say a, a silver or a brown just to kind of give it some grime up under the un, under the uh the bottom of the the chassis things like that but anyway yeah so this this video is going to be the completion it's going to at the end of this and this video shouldn't take long um but yeah it's going to have the photos and it's going to look great i'm so i so am proud of my paint job it's not perfect but compared to some of my paint jobs it looks really good hey guys if you hadn't already one other thing too speaking of paint jobs go over to our facebook group um, model car videos facebook group and uh, the reason i say paint jobs and model car videos facebook group some guys that are posting pictures on there their paint is amazing i, uh, I need to go over to their place and let me and let them show me how to uh to put such a high gloss smooth finish paint job on my on my vehicles and one other thing before i really get started in the video the reason i have this kit is because mark over at hobby nut models sent it to me to build and i appreciate that thanks mark go over to hobby nut models uh, link in the description and check uh check out his inventory he's been adding things he's got some uh, new old stock type kits, ones that's been on the shelves somewhere. Maybe got, I don't know. I hadn't spoken to Mark to ask him where uh, he gets these models, but he, you know, he gets these old NASCAR kits and things. So go over there, check out uh, Hobby Dunk Models. Uh, again, link in the description. Anyway, guys, let's get started with this thing. Be back in just a sec. All right, guys, so I'm going to do something that I've not done before. And this is nothing at all spectacular or most of you guys will be like oh man that was a real letdown i'm going to use modge podge for the first time <clears throat> so generally i use this uh testers clear paint i mean clear uh parts cement and it works great but i just want to give this stuff a shot i've got my headlights here and i'm going to get them set so they can get cured over uh overnight clean the lenses off good make sure i don't have any fingerprints on them and i've got a toothpick here maybe that'll work 
move Mr. Roadster out of the way. So this stuff is like, uh, it's like thick Elmer's glue is what it looks like. So I'm just going to take some. I've watched videos of people using it, but I've never used it. So it's going to take a It does dry clear. I, I did test that. I put some on some plastic. Just going to take me. So it's thick. Okay, so the tester's glue is, is like a liquid. So when you use it, it it can run a bit like on your windows when you're setting your windows or something. All right, so very important on your headlights to make sure that you get the lens in there straight. So one thing that bugs me worse than anything is a lens in a headlight that is not straight. Can you see what I'm doing? I can't even tell. Okay. So we've got the hole right straight down. Place it on there move it around good thing about this stuff is it moves looks like it dropped in there too far okay I'm gonna try and orient the that's actually pretty good all right so that that's in there can you see it yeah not really so Got it in there, and that'll dry clear, hopefully. There's number one. Let me take zoom back out. There we go. And number two. If you don't have tweezers to work with, get you some good tweezers. I'm not talking about these things. Look at these. I don't know where I got these from. They weren't for modeling. I don't know what they're for. They, they're f f good for nothing. I don't even know why I keep them up there on that magnet, but they're just the sorriest. But get you a good, let me put them back up here so I'll know where they're at. Get you a good pair of tweezers. I don't know where I got these. These were made in Pakistan. So you know they're good. <laughs> but anyway, get a good good set of tweezers. Don't try and do this with, your, with our clumsy fingers and we'll um, try to pick that lens up and put it in there. Yeah, we got to use our fingers, but. If you can get a good set of tweezers, do that. It has made my life so much easier with doing this. So, put a little Mod Podge. In there. Just like that. Grab your headlight, and man, have you ever had one of these shoot across the room and you never found it again? So I'm just barely holding this thing because I don't want it to do that. All right, so. Well, that one didn't drop in the, there we go. I always pre-fit your headlights to make sure they're gonna fit into the uh, chrome um, because you, the, one, one thing you don't want too is to have glue on it ready for it to go in and then you put the headlight on there and it doesn't fit you know it's too big it's got flash so always pre-fit your your glass or um well your glass as well most importantly your glass because okay that turned out pretty good because if you don't pre-fit and you get the glue on it and you put it in there and it doesn't work then you're going to end up with a fingerprint or the glue smear somehow or another it's going to uh, mess up your windows. So just a little tip. Always pre-fit your glass, your um, headlight lenses, and all this stuff. All right, so um, moving on. All right, so next day, I'll show you my headlights that I used the Mod Podge on. And I'm very satisfied how it looks. It is as crystal clear. You can't see any residue at all. Well, it's kind of hard for you to tell on the camera, but yeah, no residue, just crystal clear. And um, yeah, that, that, that worked out real good, real nice. I think I'll start using it more. Ah, oh, darn camera. So, yeah, seven nine nine at Hobby Lobby. I don't even know what it's for. What is it for? It says... Blue finish, isolate, 
and I can't speak French. Anyway, yeah, whatever. All right, um, I've got my decal on the grill, grill mounted. Shock towers are now in place. Got to touch the shocks up. My white paint needs a little touch up. And then these bolt, oh, bolt. These will go on top of the shock towers, right there. But just want to let you know. So sometimes you have chrome, and you know you have to cut it off the tree, and it's got a little spot like that. What I'll do in most cases is either use my Maltov. It depends on how visible it is, but you don't want that white plastic showing. It's going to be right on top of the headlight as well. So you get you one of these pins. It's liquid chrome. I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% satisfied with those things. They're, I'm, it either pours out, there's two different sizes, I'm not sure which one this is. Pop the top off. This is the little guy, a little teeny little pin. And you gotta shake the heck out of it to mix the paint or else it's just gonna be pretty much just, just gonna be silver paint. And then you press it in and then it just gobs of it comes out. It does leave a good chrome finish, however. And if you don't want to do that, just grab, if it's a real small area, just grab your silver Sharpie and touch up right where that is. It doesn't match the chrome exactly, but for some small minor little spots, you can hit it with that and um, it'll, be, it'll be just fine. No one will ever see it, especially if you, uh, you don't show, show it to them on the camera. <laughs> One other complaint, um, one other complaint, that, the only complaint, how about that? And I think, I've seen other guys build this kit and I didn't see, I think this just happens to be my kit, but my windshield um, frame was bent. So it was like bowed in, in the center. And it didn't fit form, it didn't form to the glass very well. So... It has a if you notice the top is a little bit there's a there's a bump in the top of it anyway that's the only complaint with this kit everything else has gone together so nice and it's turning out to look so good and i'm about to wrap it up so i've got some door handles these little guys man you have to you have you better be over your bench when you're working on these don't let them fall on the floor you'll never find them these things are so small i mean that's the head of a toothpick so those are the door handles. Got the door handles to put on, headlights, windshield, and that's pretty much it. Got the tail lights. You have to paint the red in the tail lights. They're just chrome, little chrome tail lights. So yeah, um, give me a few minutes, and uh, when I come back, I'll have her up on the little stand, and we'll we'll talk about it a few more minutes. Stand by. Well, here it is. Finished up, completed, looking looking like it wants to hit the road. Can't say enough about this one. This was a really, really nice kit. Appreciate it to Mark at Hobby Nut for sending me this. Um, Ravel kits are super nice. They go together so well. And this one, it just it did just that. So not that you haven't already seen it, but I've got the windshield on it. That's my biggest letdown is my windshield. But other than that, the kit turned out really, really nice. Got the headlights mounted. Um, itsy bitsy door handles on it. Um, tail lights, license plate, the wheels and tires look just wonderful. It reminds me of a round track tire, like a race car tire, but on the front, it's got the old bias ply. Small block Chevy with plug wires that you cannot see. So, um, I guess before any of you guys build it, want to put plug wires on it. If you want to run them under the cylinder heads like I do, might as well just not even bother because you can't see them. Um, the firewall completely swallows up the distributor. It's still there, but it's uh, it's swallowed up by the firewall. And um, you can, if you look hard enough under the bottom, you can see the spark plug wires. But, you know, who does that? It sits on a shelf. Um, the only time it gets picked up is if one of your little nieces or nephews or somebody comes over and starts going through your stuff and picking them up and looking at them. And they're not looking for spark plug wires. They're wanting to try to push it around and roll it. 
break all the wheels off of it. But anyway, this kit turned out just great. I'm so pleased with the paint. So pleased with the colors, the, uh, the paint scheme as far as the uh, interior paint, um, the little steering wheel, the instrument. It just it's just a nice looking kit. It's 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 pretty simple. It's not so it's not a complicated kit. Um, the the radiator hoses are tough to get in. The way you have to mount the radiator, um, I got them in there. Supercharged small block Chevy just looks great. What a contradiction! A Ford emblem and a Chevy motor. Yeah, I know most of you guys are probably Chevy guys. I'm not. I'm a Ford guy, and um, I prefer the Ford. Uh, I have a an old truck with a 351 Windsor in it, and I would prefer it be a Windsor sitting in here than a 350 Chevrolet, but that's just me. But you know what? If I got this thing and it was real, I would drive it all day long with the 350 in it or small block Chevrolet, whatever that is. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. This kit was really fun to build. Go get it. Go to uh, hobbynutmodels.com and, and check out Chris. Uh, I always almost say Chris because I have a friend, Chris Callen. But anyway, check out Mark's inventory there at Hobby Nut Models. That's where I got this from. Thanks, Mark. It was a, it was a good one. It's going to look good on the shelf. Also, go to our Facebook group, uh, Model Car Videos Facebook group, and join there and uh, post your pictures. Post your let's interact it's a lot of fun I'm, I'm really enjoying this we're over 300 and some odd members now and it just it's continuing to grow not as near as big as some of these other groups but you know what it takes time so if you would go over there and uh and join and if you have any friends that don't know about us send them a share it with them also speaking of my friend chris go over to chris callan auto art and uh, check out chris's amazing uh artwork that he does uh drawing or painting these old classic cars and things like that go give him go uh check out his website chris callan auto art all these links will be in the description thank you so much guys for watching i'm gonna have a slideshow now i'm gonna get up and close and personal take some pictures and uh 29 model a roaster two in one by ford Revell. sweet all right guys you take care we will see you on the next video